continuation of the book Meditation Made Easy, The Lowering Rush. In this chapter, he talks about emotions, obstacles, how to handle everything in meditation. There are the rules, thoughts, welcome thoughts, even painful thoughts. Thinking is the brain's natural sorting process. Emotions. Accept the review of emotions. You will feel at all the emotions you missed or did not complete during the day, the week, or your lifetime. Sensations. Welcome the sensations of relaxation and tension release and get used to them. You have thousands of kinds of sensations and most of them will be side effects of relaxation. There is no way to relax for long without the body going into a cycle of releasing build-up tension. Noise. Noise is no problem unless you decide to make it a problem. See how to make yourself miserable in meditation. If you can read the newspaper in a restaurant, you can handle external noise while you are meditating. The law of audio's rules. <laughs> the law of audio's rule says every med meditator has to invent at least one rule that makes meditation difficult if not impossible. For example, because meditation generally thought of a sitting still, some people make up a really is forbidden rule for themselves because of the kids, because of the work, because of the noise on the streets. If you can't think of any such rules right now, consult this handy list. How to make yourself miserable in meditation. If you sit in uncomfortable postures, you can't. If you meditate longer than you want to do or need to, you can't. If you resist to thoughts, you can't. If you sit in a stuffy room, you can't. You should not try to achieve enlightenment. It's not like that. You should not suppress your emotions and your, your mantra needs to be good to you, that might make you feel better. If you are sitting in a group of 10 people for a meditation class and the instructor says, the instructor says, okay, let's all close our eyes and find something about our breathing to enjoy. Maybe five to seven people will do something like that. They will find something to enjoy. One person will sit there sort of perplexed, not knowing where to begin. A couple of people will be sitting there scowling. If you ask one of them what he's doing, he might say, I was trying to block out no noise. Inquiring further, you would find that uh, he was starting to become aware of his breath. Then he heard a sound somewhere. Then he briefly wondered what the sound was. Then he invented an audio rule on the spot that he should not hear the sound. Then he got angry or else he recalled an internalized angry parental voice. Then disgusted. Then he returned to his breath. This all took place in 10 seconds. About thoughts, the situation. Much of time when thoughts come during meditation, you will be completely carried away by them. You will forget you, you are meditating and be busily planning something or reviewing something you did earlier in the day. This is healthy. It is part of the brain's natural functioning. The brain and nerves do this kind of processing whatever, whenever you rest. This goes all the time when you sleep particularly when you dream, and it would be unhealthy to try to resist it during meditation. So try this attitude on. When thoughts come, they come. Take a welcoming attitude as if birds have just landed on your lawn. Let them pack around. When you become aware that you are thinking, then you have a choice. You can finish the thought or you can return to the breath or whatever your focus is.
When you become aware that you are thinking, do not hurry back to the breath and do not feel you were wrong to be thinking. You are not responsible for the contact of your thoughts in the meditation, nor are you responsible for the speed, frequency, color, or tone of your voice. Your mind may feel, sound, and look tremendously noisy to you when you are meditating. This is because the brain and nerves are sorting and filtering. The body has to check every panic button you push during the day or since the last time you meditated and see if you really truly want to state of total bodily emergency declared because your red dress did not come back from the cleanest on time. Part of what we learned from meditation is perspective. To have the kind of balanced view about today's events that we might get with time, with days or weeks, months or years. There's no way to do this other than by sorting through your everyday experience. There are thoughts about thoughts. I really shouldn't be thinking this. I really shouldn't be thinking so much. Okay, your thoughts. That's enough. Shut up. Uh, if it wasn't for the thoughts, I would be peaceful. Hey, that's a pretty interesting thought. I think I will sneak off and play with it a bit. There are visual thoughts and auditory thoughts. So don't worry about controlling or editing your thoughts during the meditation. Emotions. Emotions include joy, sorrow, reverence, hate and love, to name a few. Over time, you experience and re-experience almost every human emotion while you are meditating. This is part of the brain's balancing and integrating activity. Your task is to allow the emotions to flow and to breathe with them. If you are stuck, get help. There are psychotherapists, dance therapists, art therapists and relationship teachers who can help you learn to let emotions flow. As difficult as this emotional processing seems at times, give yourself the attention. You will feel much freer after meditation. If you have a hard time being tender toward yourself, seek out people who are good at doing what friends do. You can learn from any healthy person how to pay attention to human feeling without blocking it. Cultivate people in your life who are good at emotion expression and learn to celebrate emotions with the attitude of the more the merrier. All the explosions of life, anger, tears, laughter are natural ways for the body to reset its fuses. Whatever feelings you deal with through conversation, dance, sports, music or art will not be stuck in your body for you to feel while meditation. The A ah and OSH of meditation. Well, physical relaxation, relief intention as you release it, mental review of what you are tense about as you release the physical tension. The sensations that go with deep physical relaxation are sweet and painful at the same time, similar to sitting down and lying down when you are really fatigued. Attending to and feeling into your frayed nerves hurts at the same time. It is kind of blissful. Sleep. Usually there are few moments of sleep. As you get used to relaxation, your senses unfold and bring you, you news of the universe, new perceptions. What a relief. Surprising sights and mini re re revelations. I see how do, to do that. And the humor about yourself and life improves. And Yahoo! Excitement about what you are going to do after meditating. Noise. Go placidly amid the noise of your mind and the noise in the, in the street and remember that your brain evolved to deal with it. If you are being informal with yourself, 
Then you deal with the distractions just as you would when reading a novel or magazine that's on the street. Your attention will flicker over to the outside sounds, access whether they are life-threatening, then return to your breath and whatever your meditation focus is. Almost anyone can read a novel in an airport or a newspaper in a cafe with no problem. The same for meditation. During my training to be a meditation teacher, at one point I lived in a hotel in Mallorca in winter. It was 1971 or so, and the transcendental meditation movement liked to rent hotels out, this, out of season because we got much great deals. Because it was the off season, though, construction was going on all over town. Lots of jackhammers and dynamiting early in the morning, right next to my hotel. I could have made this a problem, but I was having too much good, time, good, a, good a time to do that. I was dynamit dynamiting the obstacles inside my psyche. So, what I was going on in the outer world was a perfect metaphor. A nervous system knows how to deal with noise, you just have to let it do its things. All this is another example of how practicing a technique can make you stupid. Leave a person alone to read a newspaper in a nice coffee shop in the afternoon and the person sits there gratefully enjoying the experience. No one sits in Starbucks on a very street, busy street thinking if only there were no traffic, if only no one moved or made a sound that I could enjoy my cup of coffee. No, it doesn't happen. About the sleepiness, uh, sleep is not uh, is to be welcomed. It is a wonderful if you fall asleep during meditation. Most busy people have to sleep a depth of several dozen hours. When you pay it off, you'll feel a lot better.